Okay guys, in this video, you're gonna follow the free response exercises that we started last class. You will have these two files on your uh, mail, that way you can download the zip files and we are going to be able to import them. What I did is that I took the free responses and added them to an Eclipse project and that way you can play play with the file, play with the code, and you see the, the outcomes of each of the code segments, okay? Remember that it has some modifications because um, in order for, for the class to work, um, we needed to add some, some data, okay? Remember that in your free response, you just have to uh, add the code segment for each method. You don't have to worry about adding uh, portions of code that are, that are not there, and it just says that it works. So we're gonna start with uh, importing those two files. You got them on your mail. They're zip files. You're going to click on import. You're going to select the one that says projects from folder or archive. In general, you go to general and in general you go to projects from folder or archive and you're going to look for click on archive and you're going to select the array free response that I sent you. This is the first project which is the first question and right here where it says array free response dot zip expanded you are going to deselect the first one and only leave the Eclipse project, okay? And you're gonna click on finish and here you will have a project called Array Free Response. And we're gonna talk about the first one right away. So the first one is completely done. Um, remember that we worked on it uh, last class. This is a vocab uh, um, class and the vocab class was that there was a, a, a an array of strings which had the tags and if there was a word that was not in the in, in this uh, array it will count so the first method was very simple the first method the first method that we had to do in part a was implement the count not in vocab okay now this is the implementation of this method and remember it returns an integer number which is the number of words that are not in the vocab uh, array. Now this it, it uses a parameter a string array in order for it to look on those um, uh, strings okay. Now it, it was a very simple implementation we just needed to uh, add a counter at zero at some point and this counter will start to grow every time that the that the algorithm wouldn't find a word. So we used an enhanced loop for this and we're going to traverse the word array uh, array and for each s we are going to try and look for find words now what I did which was not on the free response was implement the find words method the find word method is just a very simple method where I also use a loop to compare if the word uh, the str word was in that list or in that array so it was a very simple you can uh, take a look on how I implemented the find word method which was not on the free response. Well, uh, if I use the find word, which is a requirement for the free response, it said you have to use a method that was in the class. So if it didn't, and this is the not symbol, if it didn't find word or uh, it didn't find the S, then it would count. And it would do this over and over again. And at the end of this um, loop, it would return the number, the count. Okay, so it was very simple because we need this um, method in order to create the array that we needed later on. Okay, so I'm going to minimize the count not in vocab and I'm going to go to the part B of my section. Now, the part B, it says that you have to implement the next method. The next method says return an array containing strings from word array not found in the vocab. So in this case, you need to return an array. Now, uh, the only difference is that we need to know how much words were not found. And in, or, and in order to do that, we needed to use count not in vocab. So uh, in order to implement this method, you just need, first of all, create a new array of strings, which is going to be the not in, we call it not in. And this array is going to have a size of the count not in vocab method. Remember, this method right here, it will return a number, an integer number, with the amount of words that were not found. And this way, we can set the size of this array before we actually start traversing it or adding things to the array. 
Remember that an array is a fixed number. It's a fixed set of variables that you can put in. So it is important that you have a size, okay? Now, we're going to start the, uh, the array position at zero because what we need is that uh, every time that we find a word that is not on the, word, on, the, on the vocab array, we are going to add it to the first position, then the next position, and so on and so forth. We don't have to worry to get um, um, an, ex uh, an exception for this on this loop because we already know the number of places that we need, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna traverse the word array. And every time that I traverse the word array, I'm gonna say if the word is not found, just like we did in the last method, every time that the word is not found, then I am going to place that word inside the not in array. So in the position zero, in position zero, I am going to add that word, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is that that position is already taken, add one to, to that R post variable, and then I will go to position one if it finds another word that was not in the vocab array. So what I'm doing is that I'm setting a counter. This is kind of look like a counter. So every time that I find a word that is not there, I just add it into a new position. Okay, and it's going to do this over and over and over again. And as I said, you don't have to worry about uh, an exception or um, an over um, an overflow exception because it's already here. And then at the end of this loop, you're going to return the not in, and that is it. You will return the array. Now, there's another class that I created called vocab test. This way, you can play around with the vocab class. Okay, the vocab test basically has a new uh, method called vocab or the constructor method called vocab. And then I have word array and the word array has the one that is shown on the free response. It's just an example, dogs, toys, sun, plants, and time. And then I have a final array where I'm going to return when I call the not in vocab um, method, okay? So this is pretty interesting. Remember that in order to print out an array, you can't do it just by calling or system.out.println the, the array. You have to use a loop to traverse the array and print each and every uh, position. So I'm gonna traverse the final array and see what I got. Okay, I'm gonna try to run this, um, this one. And as you can see, I only get toys and sun, which is the one that are not in the word array, okay? If you see word array, these two, um, these two are not in the, in the, in the starting vocab. So you can see right here, this is the initializer list. These are the, like the, the elements from the vocab list and toys and sun are not here. So this returns the, the final array. Okay, so you guys can, uh, in order to understand how all this free response works, I would definitely start thinking about what are the, like the, the most complex part of it was just creating a new array. Remember, you can create a new array, you can create parallel arrays, you can help, uh, you can help yourselves by creating temporary arrays in, when you need to put in objects or, or elements inside that array while you're traversing another array. My advice, is that um, you always you can always use uh, counters to know the position where you're at. You can always use the I or um, of the of the for loop, the the index of the for loop, in order to traverse or to use that number in order to um, get the position or the element in, at that position. So you have to play around with either for traditional for loops or um, enhance for loops in order to traverse your arrays, which is the easiest way to do this. Okay, so that is the first uh, free response question that you guys had to implement. It was not very difficult. You just need to traverse and learn how to traverse arrays and um, kind of like get the position of each one. Now we're gonna go to the second um, question. And the second question, first of all, let's import the array free response to. Let me just close this one. 
close this one, and I'm going to go to um, import again and import also a project from folder or archive. And I am going to look for array free response number two. Remember, uh, just only uh, select the one that says Eclipse project and deselect the one that says expanded. Okay. And now you're going to get an array free response on your workspace. And we are going to open it again. Now, this one is a battery charger and a battery charger test. Now, the battery charger is the class that you will get on the free response and where you have to implement the methods that you have been told. Now, I modified a little bit this battery charger uh, class because they don't give you the rate table. The rate table, they show it to you. I'm going to show it right here. And the rate table, um, if I go down to the second one and show you, they give you the rate table right here. And basically, uh, in order to understand this, uh, I am going to read a little bit about this class. So the problem is that an electric car that runs on batteries must be periodically recharged for a certain number of hours. The battery technology in the car requires that the charge time is not to be interrupted. And that is very important for some type of batteries in real life because if you charge it like halfway, um, it, should, it should be there whenever you charge it again like if you if by any chance you interrupt the battery and you need to plug it in back then the battery should know that it's on its third or fourth hour of charging it shouldn't like start all over again so it's very important because they're called battery banks um so this is something that it's a real life uh thing uh and problem so the battery tech um as i said the cost for charging is based on the hours during which the charging occurs. Now, a rate table list, the 24 one hour periods number from zero to 23 and the corresponding hourly cost for each period. So this is the 24 hours of the day. And let's say the battery, some batteries uh, will be at the second hour and need to be charged with two more hours. So what, what this is saying is that um, in order to charge a battery and, and know the cost of that charging, it will be knowing the hour that it starts and knowing how many hours does the battery require to be charged. And then you have to add those elements from there and on. So you would have to add, for example, the battery is at a start time two, and then you need two more hours. So you would add 160, 60, um, and 80. So those would be two more hours. Okay. Two hours. Sorry, 160 and 60. Those would be two hours. Hour two and hour three. So uh, this is basically what you need to do. So the first thing I did or the first modification which you don't have to do anything during your free response. But the first modification is that this rate table, I put it right here. Like I initialized an array with all the elements, the 23 elements of this rate table. Okay. And this is the value at position zero, the value at position one, the value at position two, the value at position three, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the first thing uh, I did. Um, now, when you have this rate table, you can, this array, you just have to add the numbers correspondingly. Like this is the, like the part that you need to figure out. And here it's where it says that this is the class called battery charger. Let me show it to you better this way. The class battery charger has a first method called get charging post. Now, this determines the total cost to charge a battery starting at the beginning of start hour. So remember, each battery will come and it will have a start hour. This will be a start hour. This start hour is basically the position where uh, in the rate table that it has to start. And the charge time is the number of hours from there and on to be charged, okay? So it will have a start hour and it will have a charge time, okay? So this to be implemented in part A is what I just did. So how do we do this? Well, we have an array and we have a starting position and then we have um, a number of hours uh, after this that it will be charged. Now here's a little, tr uh, a little thing that you must uh, have in mind. And here it says that it says that if the hours, yeah, there's a note, there's a note right here. Here we go. There is a note. 
Um, wait, because because if the charging hour, like it starts at let's say twenty two or twenty one, and it needs five hours, then it has to finish and then start at position zero again. So that is a very important note. Okay. Let me see if I find it, but that's basically what it says. So in our case, let's see, if it starts at the hour 20 and there is more than, than five or six uh, hours, then it has to go back to this position and continue adding the cost. Okay, so that's kind of like the tricky part of this free response, which is not very difficult, but you just need to understand what it needs to do. Okay, so... In order to get the charging cost, you have a start hour and you have a charge time, okay? Now, the start hour will just give us like the position of the array where it has to start adding the cost. That is something that you need to keep in mind. And the charge time is basically the number of iterations that it has to do, the number of times that it has to do it, okay? So... Have this in mind when, when you create the for loop. So I'm going to create a charging cost, which starts at zero. This is the, the variable that is going to store how much it costs, okay, and the one that I'm going to return. Got it? And I'm going to create a for loop, and this for loop will start at zero, and we'll do it a number of charge times. As I said, the charge times will give me the amount of iterations, the amount of positions that I need to traverse of the array in order to get the, the, the cost. So I just say starts at zero and less than charge time and I will get uh, all the iterations that I need, okay? So if I start at position three, then, and I have two, it will be 60 and 80. So those will be the two that I need. Okay, now the first uh, requirement or the first condition that I need to take into account is that if start hour by any chance, start hour is greater than 23, then what I want to do is that take start hour back to zero, and that way I can start all the way from position zero again, okay? So this is kind of like um, a condition, a condition in order for it to work, because remember, the array will, uh, will if it finishes, it will have to go back, it will have to go back to position zero. Now the charging cost, like if this is not true, well, Continue and start hour is going to be my position. Now the charging cost will be charging cost plus the rate table at position start hour. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Again, let's say I need to start at position three and I have two hours of charge. So I would go 60. This is less than 23, so it has no problem. It will add 60 and then it will do it two times. And finally, it will add 60 and 80. Okay. Now, I increment the start hour just because I need to increment the position. Remember, since they, since all the positions, the way that I need to add is one after the other, I just get start hour and add it one um, uh, each time. Now, when it finishes this loop, I just have to return the charging cost. So it would be completely easy to get this. So look, it's not difficult. You just need to understand what, what the program is asking you to do. And the very first part is like understanding what is the start hour. So you say, okay, the start hour is pretty much the position where I need to start adding my numbers. And the charge time is pretty much is pretty much the the amount of iterations that I need for 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 doing this. Okay. So uh, as I said, you need to just keep this in mind every time that you do it. And since everything cannot be just told uh, or done by me, I jumped and I left this second part for you guys. Now you're gonna have to, you can do this in pairs, you can do this in, um, in groups of three, whatever you want, just try to understand the second part of this free response. And it's determine start time to charge the battery at the lowest cost for the given charge time, okay? Now, you have two parameters. You have one parameter. It's just the charge time, the number of hours the battery must be charged. And you can make sure, and this is the precondition, you can make sure, uh, you can be sure that the charge time is greater than zero. 
and you have to return an optimal start time. Like what would be the optimal start time? And this return value has to be greater or equal than zero and less or equal than 23. Like what would be the best uh, uh, start time for it to be charged, okay? So this is what you have to do. I said return zero so I can actually get it to work. Now, if you want to play with the code before you actually um, implement the second part of the of the or the second method, uh, I create a new object from battery charger. And after I use this or after I create this object, I can start using the methods inside the object. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to test get charging cost. And I say 227. And if you can see on this one, they also give you like a set of uh, a table where you can uh, verify if your code is correct. Okay. Now let's say 22 and 7. Uh, use 20 to start hour 22 and hours of time charged 7. So this is the start hour and this is the hours charged. And I should get, it says that I should get in this case for next app from the next day, it should get for 550. Okay. So let's run this, and as I as you see, I get 550, which is the cost of um, 22 starting at 22 at hour 22, and then charging the battery for seven more hours. Okay, so this is what um, the code looks like. So the code is working perfectly fine. You guys just need to uh, complement this the get charge time. Uh, it is important that you. Uh, please copy the methods that are already implemented on your sheet of paper. Remember that the AP exam is completely written. So I would like for you to do this, like uh, copy the, the implementation of the code and you guys can start playing around with the get charge start time method. Okay. So guys, uh, have a, have a, a great day, have a nice um, lesson and hopefully we will, I will see you on the test.